I know, that. I love it so much. I'm going to start playing it at home. Yeah, we have to put that. Um, so, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Massimo Banzi and... Uh, Benedetta. Okay, Benedetta. Welcome. <laughs> Live from Lugano, Switzerland and... New York, Queens, actually. Boom. Okay. And um, yeah, so this is uh, one of the last episodes of this first season of Bar Arduino. So, you know, it'd be a good idea if you use the comment section to let us know what you think about this first season, the things that you like, the things that you didn't like, you know, and... Um, questions for things that you would like to see in the future. Yeah. I think, yeah. We're Give us some suggestion, Benny. I have, I have a lot, and I was, you know, I, I feel like after a short break of uh, us sort of hot washing the show, I'm sure there's lots of fun new things that we can do. Boom! Look at that. We have a guest from Zimbabwe. I love. I love wow. That. So, where were you in Africa when you did the lion collared project? That was uh, Tanzania and Kenya, um, mm -hmm. but I've done some other projects. Sadly, nothing in South Africa, actually, and so I hope at some point to to have a, a really good chance to go and spend some time there. Cool. So, yeah, the green screen is a mountain in the south of Switzerland, which is near Lugano. Um, Jealous. Yeah, I thought instead of the usual picture with the lake, this does get a bit boring. So boring. I went for the mountains. Okay. All right. So tonight we have a, a lot of interesting guests and uh, great guests. We made an interesting choice of making an episode with guests who are all from Arduino. And um, Benedetta, usually I keep forgetting about stuff. Is that something I have to remember to say? No, I think we want to remember. I think we want to share the discount code for. Oh, yes. This exactly. week, um, which Thank is. Thank you. I'm a senior citizen now, so you have to help me. I am. A, this is what I'm here for, uh, which is <laughs> Madrid in honor of our next guest. Right, yeah. So the next guest is near the city of Madrid. And uh, so, as usual, uh, we have um, an Arduino bite. Uh, in the middle of the show, we'll have like a one minute tip about uh, Arduino. Tonight, we have a special uh, setting, you will see. Um, and then uh, we will have, um, uh, we will also have a, a tutorial, the usual kind of tutorial we have in the middle of the show by uh, David Quartieres. And then uh, we'll have the third guest. We don't want to reveal too much about what's going on in this uh, show. And, uh, but why don't we start by bringing in the first guest? And uh, here she comes. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Nerea. Hi, uh, Hi, Hi Mereta. Uh, yeah, no, th thanks for being on the show. And um, uh, you do a lot of interesting stuff for Arduino. We actually, uh, it's, I was thinking about it the other day that we met uh, a long time ago when uh, you were still a student mm -hmm. yeah. in, in high school, I guess. Yeah, when, that was about Bergamo, Bergamo Scienza, you were, um, yeah, yeah one thing I can say, that, uh, it was very interesting because when she, you were developing this code for this robot and then you showed me the code and there was like an infinite amount of tabs. And I thought, oh my God, this woman knows how to code like serious stuff. And uh, <laughs> built a lot of these features and I was like very impressed. And then you basically killed all the people in the competition and you won. That's a long story short, yeah. 
<laughs> that was the first day I, I met you, you just... Uh, <laughs> It was also about the learning, but we also won the competition, that's true. <laughs> okay, sorry about the memory, but uh, why don't you start by telling, telling us a little bit about yourself and then what you do in... Uh, yeah, in totally. Great. So, um, actually prepared like a set of slides, so I will try to share my screen and I hope it works, but otherwise you let me know. No, no, it should be working. Uh, Let's uh, remove the discount code so that we can see better. Uh, yes. So here they are. Yep. Great. Well, but thank you first for giving me the opportunity of being here today. Uh, I always love to share whatever I have done and I hope to inspire others as I have been inspired many times. That's why I achieve many things, I think. So thank you, first of all. And um, then, so well, I guess I'm an electronics and communication engineer because that is what I have studied. But I do many other things. And here at Arduino, I do especially like, um, I focus a lot on the educational part and, and our educational portfolio and so on. Um, but basically, I'll tell you a bit more about my personal project, what I have done, how I got to know Arduino and all those things. So, um, this is basically a picture that describes me pretty well because this picture has Arduino on it, it has students, and it has robots. So that is basically what I do. I did robot as a maker, just learning uh, by doing. Then I became really interested in teaching others. Uh, and then at some point, like I uh, crossed and I met you, Massimo, and David Quartieres, and then we started collaborating. So that's all about me and about my projects. So basically today, um, I want to tell you more about how I did get started with Arduino. And if you focus a bit on the picture that has tons of robots on it, um, this is why I started <laughs> with Arduino, because I wanted to solve some sort of complex challenge. So since I was uh, really young, um, how young? That was back in the 2003, I think, when I started making robots. So I was a student, as you said, and um, we were actually making robots with different parts, with different microcontrollers and so on. Um, but it was always too complex, right? Because we, we were competing in an educational competition, which is called RoboCup Junior. And in this competition, it has a goal that is progress together, collaborating in between different countries um, to progress in the artificial intelligence. So we actually had to perform this task which is that you have to make two robots play soccer against another two robots with a special ball that emits some sort of infrared light back then. Now the ball is a bit different. But uh, basically, we were trying to perform this task with our robots. It was just an extracurricular activity that we did for fun uh, in a nonprofit association that we had at the school. Uh, and basically, it was quite complex because you needed to know what is the ball, what is the goalkeeper, what is this, where you needed to compare to communicate both robots. So when we started uh, in 2004 and five and so on, when we became a bit more serious about competing, we were selecting really huge processors that had like super good features and they're like super fast and everything was super, super. <laughs> because we thought that the task was really complex. But the conclusion of that process is, was that we didn't understand what we were doing. <laughs> so whenever something breaks, we didn't know what was anything like N nothing really. We didn't understand the code. We didn't understand like the the internal structure. It was a mess. So basically, we were using a technology that we couldn't understand. And then at some point, we we read this forum of this teacher that has done a board and a programming language or like IDE that was easier to use. And suddenly everything became super easy because we needed several of these boards. And actually, I'll tell you more technically how these robots are built. But it was easier because we had different Arduinos, but suddenly the code for the detecting the ball was here, the code for detecting the walls wasn't here. So what you said about the different tabs, mm -hmm. it was because we had like a distributed ar ar architecture somehow. So we had a lot of Arduinos inside of these robots and we managed to understand the task and we managed to solve the complex issue that we had, which was playing soccer. So that was actually my first contact uh, with Arduino. And, since we know, since we met Arduino within the team, all these robots that you see in the field 
most of half of them, more than half of them are actually done with Arduino already. So we were able to progress much faster, no? And prototyping became like a lot easier. And these user, users like supporting us was incredible, no? So yeah, that's how I get to know Arduino. And then like so the another reason was also like um, uh, like later on, right? This was as a user, no? How did I get to know Arduino as a user? And then once I knew Arduino and once like I could explore how I could use Arduino to benefit others, it was actually when I met Massimo and David and we saw that we could use these tools to actually help others to learn the same things that we were learning, right? Within the robotics field. So this is basically the two contacts that I that I had with, um, with Arduino. Uh, and then like moving on a little bit, uh, I'll tell you in which personal projects I have used them. So of course, one of the personal projects is the competition robots that I told you about. These robots play football, so they have a lot of things inside and I will tell you more about it. Then another personal project that I did and that I did learn a lot um, about it, it was the Arduino robot. And then of course my students, which I was doubting if I should put it in here as a personal project because of course they're not a project, but actually learning how to teach it was for me harder than actually building the robots. So it, it was a project itself, right? Trying to communicate to others and trying others to experiment uh, the learning experience that, that you think they should have. It was, it was a nice project too. And I had no idea about teaching. So I, I'll tell you a bit more about these three things today. And starting with the first one, which is actually the soccer robots. Um, here you can see a little bit of the building of the process. It was quite complex. They were made of carbon fiber that we actually built ourselves, but we needed robots to be light so they could move fast. Everything was really, really, really thought to be to be efficient, right? So they participate in this competition and inside they had five processors. They had like two equivalent to Arduino due Milanove back then. They had two Omegas and also they had another, another processor that was um, processing the vision of the camera to detect the color of the goals. Um, they also had like more than 30 sensors. They were used to detect the ball, 26 of them. They were used like, we also had like ultrasonic sensors to detect the walls. We also had some sort of floor sensors to detect the lines on the field. So we had a lot of things happening in parallel basically that we had to solve. And then of course the goal was to play soccer against other robots. So we were also communicating one to each other in order to know uh, where are you in the field so that they didn't disturb each other that much, right? So this is, this is a bit uh, what we, we achieved, right? Uh, the first robot had only like one Arduino and with one Arduino, we were able to move the motors and then we were like super happy. And then we included another Arduino and we were able to read the sensors and like, oh, wow, well, now if we put this and this together, they're gonna work really good, right? And then like we basically learned that, okay, we have this master in the robot that actually controls the other Arduinos somehow, then this is gonna become super efficient. So this is actually how we figure out that dividing the problem in a smaller parts, we could get to actually make it work very well, right? And it was like a true, like learning by doing experience up to, up to the point actually that for instance, at the beginning we were communicating all the Arduinos using I2C and suddenly we went to the States because this competition is happening in, in a different place every year. So we went to the States and uh, in the competition, nothing worked. But in, in the lab, everything works. So we didn't know what was happening. And of course, it, it was the noise, right? There was a lot of noise and uh, the communication wasn't working properly. So we had to go to the supermarket, we had to buy aluminum foil, put it around the cables, <laughs> and then everything started working, right? So then whenever I joined the university and they told me about the magnetic fields and so on, like I had experienced it already. So it was a super good experience and it was like a lot of learnings on, on the process. And also like, we did learn to communicate with others and we did learn to explain to others what we were doing and so on because we had to demonstrate that the work that uh, we were doing, it was our work and it wasn't like being done by the teacher and so on. So it was a cool experience. So this is how I get started with Arduino and with robotics and so on. And this is the competition that we actually managed to won several years in a row. And, and actually, yeah, it was super cool. But then this convert it into something else, which is, which is actually like the next project. So the next project, which is the Arduino robot, and I have put here like the very, the very <laughs> first prototype, almost like a joke, <laughs> because <laughs> I think, 
we were having those sort of like cookies and coffee and I don't remember like uh, we were just like chilling and, and we put these two papers together and um, we, I don't know, it, it just kind of happened, right? Since uh, we as a team met David and Maximo in, in Italy in the Bergamo Ciencia, I don't know, we just started talking about different possibilities and different things and, and back then I remember that several teams already wanted to buy our robots mm -hmm. and we didn't want to sell our robots but we were super interested in doing something that could help them learn, right? So it was awesome because back then, um, thanks to the collaboration, I mean, we were students, so we couldn't reach, or we couldn't do much in our own, but whenever we had the support, and of course we established this collaboration, then we were able to continue learn and, and put all these learnings together to make like something that was commercial, right? That of course, like if we do it today, we will make it much different. It was also a learning, but it, it was cool, right? And I chose the picture in the right, specifically because it has an Arduino Uno that is huge. So this is what we used to have back then in the lab. We had that in, in, the, in the wall, right? They're hanging. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, this is the, the Arduino robot, uh, another project that I'm really like proud of the learning that I had doing this project and sharing with, with the team back then. And I guess like thanks to that col first collaboration, I ended up working at Arduino. So it, it was super good, I can say. <laughs> And then just uh, to finalize a little bit uh, my experience, I just wanted to tell you like the last project or at least like something that I really like and that I focus a lot in, which is the students, right? And uh, suddenly when, when making the robots and when like joining the university especially and, and see that all these technicalities and all these numbers and all these things were super cool, but I was like in some sort of human interaction. And then I discovered that um, by teaching, I, I had that kind of uh, feeling, right? So. I had no idea about teaching and having 30 or whatever number of kids in the classroom, it was really difficult to manage. So it was a challenge in a sense, but also I discovered that technology or like in that case robotics, it was really appealing and it was really interesting to them. So I had the opportunity, they, they gave me the opportunity to learn from them how they like to learn and that was super interesting. And, and that's it, like this is, this is my last project and my last uh, hobby that I really like uh, trying to convert what I have learned into easy stuff so that I can teach it to others and, and eventually they can enjoy whatever kind of technology as well, right? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, this is my, my third project and here I think uh, I kind of finished my presentation but I'm open for questions. I have some, how old or what, what ages do you, um, do you like teaching the most? Um, well, back then, so this, this teaching that we were doing, um, it started having like 10 students and first they were like all secondary school, but then we started like expanding. We had like a non-profit association uh, that might be, became like part of the part of the board of this association. And we ended up having almost like 250 students. And this was from three years old to 18 years old, more or less. So I was teaching the youngest, sometimes and that was uh, that was challenging <laughs> but it was super fun i should have a quick question so but when uh, at what age did you start to program Oof. so now i'm 28 and i made my first program in 2003. <laughs> so, so, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, yeah it's uh what 17 years ago so you yeah. were like uh, 11 or something like that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I was super young. And I remember that at the beginning, actually, like um, in the robotics club, uh, it was an informatics. So they were they were teaching us how to how to type in the keyboard. And then suddenly the teacher got really inspired because he saw that uh, somewhere they were doing robotics. And he came next day and said, you know what, we'll do robotics. <laughs> so he was like, oh, <laughs> and what was your first uh, programming language? Oh, that was a graphic, I think that was Logo, actually. Ah, ah same, yeah. same. Nice. Uh, little Turtle. Yeah, it was, and it was the same. It was, for me, too, it was in the context of a so-called informatics class, but we didn't do anything cool, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. But so this means that when you were in school, basically this class just turned to robotics and that's kind of when you started to love robots. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I like it because it was uh, it was challenging. I don't know. It, it was just different, um, and it wasn't only like the technical part. You know, whenever we started uh, competing, you had to go to the sponsors and you had to tell them, "Hey, I need some support." And it wasn't it wasn't easy, especially like the first year when there was like twenty seven teams and we were like the twenty six in the ranking, coming back to the sponsors and telling them, "You know what? We need even more money because we want to do it even better." <laughs> That, that part, you know, like the, um, it's like, like, yeah, some sort of like problem solving applied into real life. Uh, that, that was cool. That was uh, nice. Wow. So basically, you are one of the people that basically was inspired by the school. You know? So that when you have a teacher that it's inspiring. So do you, do you think that kind of drives a little bit what you do? The fact that you saw what happens when uh, somebody is a good teacher? Yeah, I, I think it drives it totally because, like, I, I, I did see, like, wow, I, I see that um, I think that I have the possibility to to be patient, to try to solve something or just to analyze different possibilities or just to spend more than an hour into a task or a problem. And all, all those things, I noticed that those are skills, regardless if it is in robotics or in a different kind of uh, subjects. Those are skills that I that I think uh, we need to push and, and we need to go for, right? So, so that's what I thought that I could give to to students. That's a super interesting path. So, what is uh, so is that something that you're interested in right now that you're not doing, but you would like to kind of start doing something that excites you, that gets you passion? Yeah. Well, many things. <laughs> <laughs> No, I tell you, I don't have much time, I, I have to say. Uh, also, like, uh, yeah, I have a lot of things to do in, in general, but I also always wanted, like, um, to have, like, my own competition team. Just uh, to be the teacher of a competition team, that's mm -hmm. something that I really would like. And to build, like, a humanoid, because I always did robots that has wheels, but I never build a humanoid myself. So those are two things that I really would like to accomplish. Wow. Nice. Let's see. There, there's a bunch of people in the comments that say, "Oh yeah, I like to, I like logo." People that are saying, "Hey, I do Arduino and Microbit with my 11-year-old daughter." And uh, you know, one of the things that I really like about the work that we do also in Arduino for me is that uh, there is always this uh, wrong perception that technology is mostly for men, and then it is clearly not. And the people in this, <laughs> the other two people in this live stream are a clear example of that. So I think one of the th things I love about working as well is that we try to push this idea that technology is for everybody. And so, you know, and, and people like you and Benedetta are the people who then, then drive other uh, girls mm -hmm. to, to get that, That's super cool, like having the opportunity to inspire other women or girls into technology. Uh, I think that's one of the really beautiful things, right? And it, you don't have to do nothing. You just have to tell what you have done. So mm -hmm. it's, easy. it's easy and um, why not? Yeah, also this is one of the reasons why in uh, Bar Arduino we always have like, a, uh, so the first guest is always a, a woman because we want to inspire all people to say, hey, you know, you're a woman, you want to do technology. Look at the incredible array of people. <laughs> Yeah, the different applications. Mm -hmm. and then, then, when you got into robotics, did you like the challenge part? Did you like that you had to like solve something? Or did you like the building? Or, or maybe both, I don't know. You know. I actually like it more like uh, always the electronics and the building part, uh, the mechanical. I really like it a lot, much mm -hmm. more than the programming. But I also had to do programming a lot because they Whenever like we reach the competition, the jury will ask about everything. So we were to be, we had to be ready to to answer, right? But um, I don't know. I think the challenging part, uh, I really like it. And for instance, like um, I think I'm a little bit of a competitive person, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not like competitive against others that much. It's also like against myself because I, I remember that we were putting the posters in the competition. Speaking of open source, and we were putting the posters with all the details of how the robot was done. And like 
other participants used to come take pictures and they used to ask how would you have done this or that and sometimes we even had a printed copy and just giving to them so it wasn't about competing badly against others mm -hmm. but uh, we always wanted to improve our, ourselves and and i think that part uh, it was challenging so so the competitivity personally kept like on going with it mm -hmm. wow Super nice. So uh, have you seen uh, the Arduino EduVision show as well? You were a, <laughs> a guest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it and I watched it. And sometimes I even like check the scripts a little bit in, in advance and, and so on. <laughs> that was super interesting. Yeah, let's plug it a little bit. So if you are watching, uh, there's another show that we do. Normally it's at 4 p.m. on Thursday, I think. And it's called Arduino Edu, EDU Vision. And it's a very nice uh, show about uh, education, Arduino. It's also providing a lot of uh, interesting, uh, in a way, advice for teachers on how to teach remotely. And um, so I think it's, uh, it's very nice. So you should watch that too. Yeah, and um, Thursday might be the last episode also of the of the season. So I went through it this week as well. People should catch that. Yeah. Well, it's the summer, so you know, a number of people are actually starting to go on holiday. So it's good for them. We take a break and we rethink a little bit about the show and uh, try to figure out how to do it the better next. Uh... So somebody's trying to teach the a four and a six year old. That's to, me. To, 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 <laughs> you're, you're, you're the one who's trying to teach kids to solder. I, I need to learn, I need to lower the, you know, there's a lot of apparently of, you know, 10 and 11 year olds. What's, <laughs> what's the youngest you can get a kid to solder is the question. Cool. So for now, thank you for your, uh, Thank you for being here and for your presentation. Please stay with us because we'll, you know, call you back at the end because there's normally more questions and also we yeah. we say good night. And also last week I think we started a new tradition to say ciao mama where you have to come. <laughs> <again."> <laughs> Everybody was very excited about saying hi to their moms. So you know. Wow, that was really <laughs> so thank you very much and I'll call you back in a few minutes but uh, for now we'll send you back to the green room where there is no snacks and no drinks but uh, so. <laughs> sure. thank, thank you. you very much thank, thank you. you thank you Nadia. all right well she's great so we really love uh, the work that she does and uh, you know it was very interesting for me that you know I, I I saw her when she was doing a competition as a essentially as a a kid, no? And, uh, yeah, that's amazing. It's just it's awesome even just to from the slides to like her in real life seeing the progression, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, also in the picture I had hair. You know, like it was a picture with me with actual hair. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> Now we are in the segment where we start to show a few things that we have prepared. So why don't we start by showing, uh, well, first of all, let's remind everybody about the discount code. So if you have at least 50 euros in your shopping cart, introduce this input, this code at the checkout, and you get a small discount. Uh, courtesy of uh, Arduino. And so, yeah, and the code is Madrid because Nerea is near Madrid in an undisclosed secret location near Madrid. And um, then let's see. Then the other thing I wanted to show is that, uh, you know, we started a few weeks ago with this thing called Arduino Bytes, which is this short. Uh, uh videos that can tell you something that you didn't know about arduino so today we have our amazing francesca who is our uh, one of our hardware engineers also a doctor in astrophysics amazing yes that explained will explain to us something that we didn't know about arduino let's watch mm. Did you know that the Maker 1000 is a secretive backboard? Now it's not that secret. 
It's a test point placed on the bottom side of the board. It allows you to read messages sent by the Wing 1500. What you need is a Maker 1000, another Arduino board, and two wires. Here I have a Maker Wi-Fi 10. You have to solder a wire to this test point and then connect it to the UATAR X of the other board. Then connect the two board grounds with the other wire. The code for enabling the debugger by the mystery can be found at this link. So first, load the modify Wi-Fi 101 in the folder library and into the Maker 1000. Second, on the second board, Lot the sketch at examples for communication serial pass through with both rates set to 1150 200 and open serial monitor for this board. Third, open serial monitor for the Maker 1000 and you read the messages on the serial monitor of the other board. However, the Maker 1000 is now a board of the past generation, so if you are interested in this product, I would recommend its evolution, which is the Maker Wi Fi 101. Thank you for watching. Wow, it was a hardware tip, yep. the first hardware tip, very cool. So now we have another guest who's going to show us a little tutorial. The, the next guest needs no introduction, as they say in the American <laughs> TV shows, True. because he's the co-founder of Arduino. If you look at the very first Arduino boards that we produced, there are two names written on it, and it's mine and the next guest, who I'm going to bring to the show right now. And he was on the first episode. Yo, what's up? Oh, I see yeah. a cat butt. He's from an, und he's an undisclosed location in Sweden. Welcome to the show, David. Hey, what's up? Uh, I'm, just, I'm just hiding here, and the cat followed me. <laughs> the cat knows what's up. Nerea had a great picture of us where I, you know, we were younger, and we had, I had hair. I mean, you still have it, but. Yeah, my mind turned white. I also saw those pictures, you know. Now you, you look like one of those serious professors who give life advice to people. <laughs> either that or a leader of a religious cult, either or. <laughs> Which might be more ludicrous, and then, and, and then uh, you know. You know, like I think it's a lot more fun because professorship were really hype in the seventies. <laughs> no, now it's better to be a little for really just cult. <laughs> Somehow, I hope there is no lawyers watching this show. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, David is in the witness protection program, so <laughs> he's in. Oh, the <laughs> okay. Wow. So uh, you are actually showing a tutorial today. So you want to tell us a little bit about this tutorial? What is it all about? Yeah, so I, I made this project two years ago uh, in a competition with Arturo Guadalupe, one of the Arduino hardware developers. Um, mm -hmm. And I use it quite a lot nowadays to discuss with my students about um, about my, uh, my work with, with uh, interaction with systems that talk to you in different ways. Because people, you know, have, tend to have systems that that uh, that uh, interact with buttons and joysticks and whatever. And I think there is other subtle ways of interacting, like using lights, for example. And I think there is so much things that you can do with light. So this is about light. So why don't we start showing the videos and then? Uh, at the end, uh, we can have a chat and also get some questions from uh, the um, from the audience. Uh, let's start. Hello, this is David Cuartiles. I'm here today to tell you a story about a project that I made a couple of years ago at Arduino and with Arduino parts. And the thing is, like I I was in making a kind of like a competition against this guy. I'm going to show you a picture. This is Arturo Guadalupe. He's one of the developers at Arduino, one of the best hardware developers I know, just to give the guy a compliment. And uh, so Arturo and I were having this conversation about what could we do to compete against each other. And um, also we were discussing about this, um, like making a clock. So it was this conversation about, okay, we, we had the same components. 
And we had to make some competition about, you know, doing something with an Arduino Maker 1010 and building a clock with some simple display. And so I challenged him and I sent him uh, a bunch of uh, LED rings and, uh, and we saw who was the best one in making something out of it. I have to say Arturo made this great library about the control of the RTC parts of the Arduino boards, which means you can have a real-time clock that counts the time in seconds. And, and he made a great contribution that is used by thousands and thousands of people. And I went a bit more funky. And and so I, I was thinking about like, what, what is that I could do? And um, I started writing some code about like, you know, making simple tests using LED rings and uh, making the LED rings move the LEDs in opposite directions, uh, making it behave like a clock. And at some point I came with this idea of like, okay, let's make it work with like some sort of cloud. And I, I make it, made it connect to AWS and, and just like get some stuff out of it. But I, I'm not going to focus on that part. I, I, I'm going to focus more on the uh, interesting aspects behind doing something like what I'm going to show you now. Let me just show you the project running. So this is a, this is a light pot. And as you see, it's powered through a USB cable here. And it has a bunch of LED rings. And I will show you later how I build this whole thing. Uh, it's basically like, oh, that's an event. Okay, so it's like waiting for an event to happen. The event could be that somebody opens the door or the temperature reaches a threshold or, you know, something like that. So any kind of those events are registered and then represented with the arrival of an event. So I had to write the whole set of libraries to make the lights move in this way and be controlling this way. So let us let me just show you a couple of the constructive aspects of this first, and then um, I will show you a bit of the code. And of course, if you would like to get the code, I would be really, really glad to share it. I prepared a small slideshow to show you the process of building this project in particular. Of course, there is like the possibility of using all sort of like proper digital manufacturing tools, but I went really old school. I discussed with a carpenter at Malmo University, where I, I work sometimes, about how he would make this kind of like pot-like lamp. And he was like, you know what? I have this really great foam that you can handle with this uh, kind of like old school tooling. And so he and I went into the workshop and, and take this cube of, of uh, material, made it into a cylinder, and then um, emptied the cylinder from the inside. And I will show you later the construction aspects of of the pod. And well, I've had to make some calculations on how things were going to be. I'm going to use like this three millimeters plexiglass as a screen and how that's going to look like mm -hmm. and so on. And also decided to make uh, yet another shape. And I made a second shape, which is also it's a cube. And I built a cube out of um, MDF, but I wanted the cube to have a certain thickness and I only had three millimeters MDF. So I had to make some calculations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I cut everything and glued it together. This is the, the first view of the pod. Let's get to the second part. And as you see here, it's still lacking the screen, but it has a, a piece of this foam that has been emptied. And then it, it has a piece up here that is made three millimeters deep so that you can stick in the plexiglass. And in the beginning, I thought I was going to need some sort of a piece in the center to hold things together. But very soon I realized that that was really not needed and I took it away from the design. And the plexiglass is a trans transparent plexiglass, but in order to make it translucent, I had to use a sand GAN. So this is a GAN, if you're not familiar to it, that projects sand. And in that way, it's like sanding literally the surface of the plexiglass and leaves it with this very nice frosted quality. It's not frosted from the factory. I had to frost it by hand. And what you see here is the picture. You see a square. That square, it belongs to the other lamp that I made because I made two different interactive lamps. And of course, I had to use some weight to glue the parts together. I ha didn't have any proper weights at home, so I took this big jar that I filled up with water and used it to make some weight and glue parts together. One of the key aspects of this project was to figure out how to connect the NeoPixel parts to the Arduino Maker 1010. Because the Arduino Maker 1010, as you know, works at 3.3 volts, but it still has the possibility of proxying out 5 volts from the external power into the NeoPixel rings, which is what I used. And also how to like put together rings of different sizes. And uh, I use this simple technique. I, I like to use naked wires a lot because they give you structure, but also conduct current. And so I build this tiny structure with the three NeoPixel the lights and just to hold things together. And this is the view of the two lamps. The one I showed you earlier, the pot, and then the square lamp that I don't have here, I can show you, but you see the plexiglass was frosted. So it, it gives uh, this translucent quality that is really, really good to dim the lights a little bit and not see like the full light at full blast, which is, is typically very strong. These kind of lights are pretty good, a different view. 
And uh, well, this is a view of the desk that I used to build this project. A little bit messy. And also all the time I was experimenting with hand-drawn QR codes, which actually work. I can recommend that if you want to make a fun project. I made this one for my daughter. But you can see the pot there as I was trying the code, as well as many other things at the same time. Oh, and a cat, because there's always cats that <laughs> go around. So my cat was about to destroy my whole project when he decided, well, she decided to jump on the table and start playing with parts. I could save them just in time. So this is the final result that I just showed in the picture. And uh, I want to show you different videos with different behaviors. Just do not spare you the time of like programming everything and so on. But here you can see this is a behavior for a certain type of event. And so I made a library that, that describes different types of behaviors and that you can use to light the, the pods differently. This is another view for the different, different behavior. So you can see they behave entirely different and they give you different feelings. So, so you can convey different meanings just by playing around with lights. And that's, it's important. It's like in, you know, less than half an hour of building, uh, you can start experimenting with these light behaviors uh, very quickly, which is what well, at the end of the day matters from like a design perspective. And yet another behavior. I, I made like eight or nine different ones. I just want to show you three. Okay. So just to, to show you the, the final details before jumping into talking about the code, I would like to show you how it's built inside. So here you see the pod. I see still running. So oh, another event. So let me just dismount it. It's not glued together because I want to have the possibility of dismounting it. So this is the first of plexiglass. You see? And it's just a ring of plexiglass and then I frosted it using the Again, these are the LED rings, and this is a piece of MDF that holds the LED rings. And there is my Maker 1010, and I just solder it to that board, so it acts as a breakout board to have screw connectors, uh, because I want to have screw connectors just to make it easier to move things around, you see, screw connectors. And there I have a couple of transistors that I never got to use. So I, I just built that because I wanted to be able to doing other things with sound uh, that I, I didn't get to implement in this prototype at the time. Then the, the USB cable here is not carrying data. The USB cable is only used to bring in power. So I cut an old USB cable uh, from a charger, to those that don't have data, and just plug in here to, to have power. If I want to reprogram it, I need to add another USB cable going to the, to the normal micro USB connector of the, the Maker 1010 and then get it to work. So let's take a look at the at the code of stuff, right? Just to, I told you I, I made a bunch of examples of code, but I, I will just focus on this one that is called uh, ambient display fake events. And the fake events example is one that is running right now in the pod. And um, as it says here, I have three different LED rings of 12, 16, and 24 LEDs respectively. And uh, and as he says here, it was a contest between Arturo and David. <laughs> and uh, the idea was to show different functionalities of the Maker 1000 in the first place, but then it became the Maker 1010 because we did have the possibility of playing around with it. Just to make sure, I can't remember anymore which is the one on this device. Uh, on this device, actually, the Maker the Maker 1000. Okay? But uh, in the other one, the square lamp that I actually have at home is actually running on the Maker 1010. The code is completely uh, interchangeable. So um, it imports the Adafruit NeoPixel library and includes these other libraries uh, that are made specifically, pixel.h that I made here, that allows me to determine the, or call the lights by pixel by pixel, and the ringlet that allows me to have a bunch of functions to work with the rings. See, I can decide which is the calibration LED, which means which is the LED where the, the circle starts. So I can align all of the lights and making work together. I can talk to the exact ring, talk to the exact pixel. I can clear the whole ring. I can check out which is the light value of a certain place and so on and so forth. So um, and what this does is that uh, given the total amount of pixels, the total amount of pixels are created by putting together the pixels of each one of the rings one after the next. So in total, I have a whole bunch of I see everything as a single array, but when I iterate with my software, I'm playing just with the amount of LEDs that belong to the to the ring itself. And here there's different events that I define. So the interactions can be uh, uniform linear, linear pose, wave, and so on. This means like I'm doing different things. For example, I'm connected to the network. 
or I'm just like counting the data in a linear way, or I'm collecting data from the network, or I'm fading the data in, and so on. So I could simulate different kinds of events depending on what's going on, because in theory, this is going to be a connected lamp, and it should be able of representing a whole bunch of different things based on the data coming from the network. Then, of course, there's different states, and these are the, the states that we have available. We are starting, connecting, we are connected. There was an event, and uh, there was an event based on distance. So this, this data actually was made like this because I was playing around in, in an environment at the university that collected information from the space itself. So it could actually represent that there was data uh, coming from sound in the room or from people being at a certain distance from one another in the room. This was uh, this was then sent to AWS and this lamp would connect to AWS, get this data and represent it. And the rest of the code just, you know, is a very simple state machine that if you are in a certain state and data comes in a certain way that you have to change to a different state. So that's exactly, that is very simple. And as you see, some of the events are not even implemented because uh, this was the fake version. There's another version that actually implements some of the events and it's a lot more complicated, but I will spare you time for that. If you're interested in the code, you can always take a look at it there. So um, that's it. This was my, this was my pod. Uh, as I told you, it doesn't take a long, a long time to build it. And it's definitely a lot of fun. And I made this two years ago and it's still with me and it still runs. So I have it here. And when I want to impress people, I turn it on and talk about it for a while. So thank you very much and see you on the internet. Very cool. I made a, a coaster a while ago that is not as cool as this. So I, I want to, I personally want the code so I can make mine a lot cooler. Yeah, no worries. As, uh, I just need to remove my, my home Wi-Fi information from the code and then I will upload it to, uh, to GitHub and share it. No problem. Yeah. I will announce it over Twitter and, and so on. Awesome. People will be very happy to play with it. So I'll, um, my camera is going crazy, but <laughs> hopefully it will be on for yeah. a few more seconds. And uh, yeah, no, it's um, it. So I was trying to, so you used AWS as a kind of cloud thing. What yeah, kind well, of protocols did you use? Yeah, this was made two years ago. So, uh, and it yeah, was, yeah. I had to connect to AWS because the university was making this project about a fully connected uh, room. So in principle, I was just interested in making a, a interactive lamp that could represent different types of events because I wanted to discuss with my students about the expressiveness of light. And um, and so and so I, I, at some point, there was a minister of, of higher education of Sweden coming to visit, and they needed some way of representing what was going on in the room. And they made a classic boring dashboard. <laughs> and I was like, come on, people, we can do better than this. And, uh, and so um, I hacked together this with the help of a couple of the Arduino engineers when it, for when it comes to connect to AWS, because that wasn't evident back then. And uh, and so we we just made it work, you know. And it was really funny because I was explaining this to the minister, and and uh, the thing was like registering events because it was for real, getting temperature data and far far, uh, far more beautiful than the the dashboard. So the minister was like hypnotized with this, right? Like, wow, <laughs> how do you do it? And I was like, you know, it actually took me, as I said, half an hour in the carpentry and uh, probably like seven hours of code because the AWS thing wasn't evident because we actually did the official hack on how to connect to AWS for doing this project. Uh, and then making the different ring effects and light effects. You know, I've been doing a lot of code for already for like Commodore 64. <laughs> you have to think like old school when you have like these old pixelated displays. And it, it was really fast. And and it was by far the most beautiful and functional of the projects that were shown that particular day. Hmm. Very nice. So um, a lot of people have been asking for the code. So how can they find the code for this thing? Yeah, so 
my my official account for GitHub is D Cuartillas, like my nickname. So you can find me on GitHub. The, this is not uploaded yet. Uh, as I said, I have to anonymize it. It's one of those things that I made real fast, and I never got the chance to share with anybody. And just because you guys asked for for a show, I thought today that it would be a good good opportunity. So I will share it. And uh, from tomorrow morning, you can find it directly on GitHub. Uh, it's completely based on Arduino code, 100%. Um, and it's a simple state machine. So it will also help you learn about state machines. And I always do my stuff step by step. So all of the examples are completely explained. Uh, uh, and you're welcome to contribute and make pull requests on it, of course. Cool. So thank you very much for this. So and so thank you for doing the tutorial and sharing with us. I um, we are not going to go to the next uh, segment, but uh, thank you for taking part. And if you have other uh, you know tutorials, please prepare them. And we're gonna you know uh, we could, we're gonna have uh, more segments with David in the in this. Also, the, the question that everybody is asking is: that Are you gonna have a bar Arduino in Spanish? Yeah, we discussed this. So I will be glad to have it. Maybe we should start directly after the summer. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. But uh, definitely, I, I know there is a huge audience and there is uh, a lot of people in the Spanish community have made a lot of projects that will be a great opportunity for them to to show off. So yeah, let's do it. Cool. All right. Hagamos so, lo, amigos. <laughs> So thank you very much for uh, for that, and uh, so I will uh, let you go back, and I'll uh, bring in the next guest. Thank you, David. Hey, have a good one. Woo! All right, that was cool. You can go back yeah, then, now. The next guest is another person who works for uh, for Arduino, but has a lot of uh, a lot of talents. And I will, we will let him tell us about it. Welcome, Alessandro Ranellucci. Good evening, everybody. Ciao. Hi, Massimo. Ciao, Benedetta. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. So uh, tell us, uh, well, you know, you have a lot of talents and uh, a lot of interesting work. So I don't want to ruin your presentation. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about who you are and what you do? And then we'll ask, we'll have some questions for you. I'm basically a fan of Bar Arduino, so I'm so happy to be now in this frame with you. I will take a screenshot for my mom. Uh, so <laughs> if, if you can share my my, my slides, I will oh, yes. tell, tell a couple Come of words in. about, about oh. me. I joined Arduino basically a few months ago, and I'm very happy because it's like when your favorite uh, band calls you on stage to play the bass with them. So I, I'm very happy to contribute to, to the Arduino. Uh, world. Uh, basically, I, th this is a brief summary of what I did in my, my life. I studied architecture, but uh, I've been coding since I was seven years old, lots of freelance coding and contributing to open source projects uh, until uh, in year 2000, I fell in love with the early 3D printing efforts, the RepRap community, and I discovered all that world of makers uh, taking shape uh, around the world. So I started to work on, on a software which uh, uh, became well known in the 3D printing world called Slicer. It's a full C++ software for 3D printers and uh, a, a big community grew up around this project. So I, I really felt this uh, addiction uh, uh, about uh, coding and giving answers to the community and providing them with features that unlocked their, their creativity. Uh, so I, I felt it was an enabler for a much, much larger community. And this has been a, a wonderful experience. Uh, I have also been teaching interaction design, mostly physical interaction. And together with Massimo, I have been organizing also Maker for Rome for, for many years. Uh, so we had a very privileged point of view of, on, on an, an entire world of makers and creatives and that, that uh, solved problems or created any kind of solutions with maker tools. And then in the last three years, I've, I've been working for the Italian government as their head of open source, trying to make our country full open source and uh, promoting that all software written by the Italian government should be published 
in a public repository with an open license. So open source by default. This, this was my, my last challenge before jumping in Arduino and starting a new journey. What do I do in Arduino? I, I basically take care of the huge community of developers and users. They are almost two different communities. Developers contribute to, to improving the Arduino uh, tool chain and, and software ecosystem while users are the, all, all people who use Arduino for their projects. And I make sure that Arduino continues to deliver the best hardware and software products out there for makers, for creators, uh, for, for developers, and for the community out there. Um, I want to, to show something, actually. Maybe, I don't know, maybe people who are watching this live stream wonder what this slide is. This is something that is not public yet. So I actually got in my mailbox the latest prototype. So if you see in my hands, I have something. I have something round. Let's I see if I can put that. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe you can, yeah, you can stop my, my, my screen oh, sharing. Uh, thank you. And OK, I'm, I'm letting people see this. Uh, and uh, if you have any ideas of what this could be, I would like to hear in the, uh, in the comments or even what you hope this is. If you have any, I don't know, any ideas. OK, that's it. That's it. You will discover this. Uh, <laughs> pretty soon <laughs> this is pure teasing <laughs> yeah it looks like a it looks like a ufo <laughs> yeah it's round it's uh yeah because in the picture with the case it looks like a ufo exactly you see this transparent case with the with the arduino logo engraved on it and these holes on the side okay this is something that will be announced very very soon in the upcoming weeks so this is the first time this actually goes live somehow mm -hmm. and i'm very curious to hear secret, your guesses. secret project that's a good actually this is a good mm -hmm. uh, this, this is something that we, we can we can give some hints actually this is something that goes along uh, with the uh, the whole story of arduino which is about democratizing access to technology and this is one step further. It's going to democratize access to one more bit of technology that now is not uh, accessible as many people would like it to be. Okay, I, say, I said too much. I'll go, I'll go <laughs> forward with my presentation. <laughs> so Arduino community, we are more than 30 million. So I keep repeating this several times in, in, in every day because it's a, it's a huge, incredible number. We are a lot all together and uh, we are a lot on the forum uh oh by the way the forum is going to get a, a nice upgrade uh, uh very soon uh, we are a lot on project hub where we all publish our projects and by the way if there is any of you listening that have hasn't shared their projects on project hub maybe it's time to publish your first tutorial there because you will get a lot of comments views and respect from other arduino people and then we are starting to be uh, quite a, a, a nice number on on the new discord arduino has a discord space where you can chat real time with other users so discover the discord channels and and, and come there you will also find us there uh, we're not too busy working uh, we will talk to you and then we have a lot of people the more core developers, let's say, uh, collaborating on GitHub. We have 250 re open repositories on GitHub. That's a, a huge number for an open source project. 250 open repositories, uh, which we take care of with the help of the community. Uh, just, uh, um, just to give you some, some, some uh, an idea, we have uh, 100 libraries, we have six official cores, um, and we have uh, the Arduino CLI, we have the Java IDE. So we have a lot of goodies that, that you might want to discover and, uh, and contribute also. Um, we are doing some work on this. We are creating a web browsable library directory. We are enhancing the security of our libraries. We are moving all, all of our documentation to GitHub. 
So there are many things ongoing that we are going to announce very, very soon. And uh, I would like to say one last thing. Uh, during, uh, during the years I spent on Slicer, coding on Slicer, I got many spontaneous donations from users who used my software and wanted to say thank you or wanted to say, hey, please go on with this, with this project, uh, even if you do it in your free time. So they were sending me like $5 or $200 just to say this. Um, so I know how important is it to be supported by the community. Uh, and I would say this applies to Arduino as well, even though it's a big project. You can you can donate to Arduino as any open source project, but you can the best thing is actually to buy original Arduino boards so that you can actually get something in your hands and use it for yourself or give it as a gift to whomever you want. Uh, and remember, do not buy counterfeit or clones if you really want to support Arduino because we are using that money to maintain our huge open source software ecosystem and our engineers have, have a really a lot to do to, and a lot to release in the, in the near future. Just to, call, just to, to, to go to the end, uh, let's say in the forum there is a section where you can write your suggestions for the project. Uh, I'm there, the Arduino team is there, we read everything you write so if you have feedback uh criticism or you want to say your how, how you love arduino or you want to actually help somehow just go there and reach out to us wow cool very cool let me remove the presentation so that we can see you better <clears throat> wow that's cool that's a lot of uh there's a lot of interesting work I think you know the community aspect it is very important for Arduino, and so I think it's very important that you are kind of taking care of that uh, mm -hmm. of that aspect. There's still a lot to do, so you know. I'm surprised no one commented in, in the comments about the, the very bad wiring I'm showing here. But this was my first 3D printer I built, and I wanted to have it here with me today. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is a terrible wiring, so <laughs> not an example. <laughs> so that's basically the reason why you started Slicer. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hands on and trying to fix my own problem and sharing with other people. <laughs> that's a nice proactive attitude, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Additive manufacturing and addictive manufacturing <laughs> together. So it's, uh, I have actually a question about some of the stuff you did before, but uh, so being in charge of open source for a government and also being in charge of open source for the Italian government, I was that I'm all sorry. of us are Italian citizens. Uh, I thought I liked impossible missions because I do too work with governments, but I, I would never put together open source and Italian government in the same sentence. <laughs> so. so was it kind of difficult to get people to understand open source inside the government? You know, what's the experience? Oh, it's really, sometimes it's really hard to pass the cultural attitude in the, uh, about open source, which is code in the open, release fast, uh, uh, talk to the community instead of being defensive all the time. So sometimes it, it really takes a lot of, a lot of you know, psychological uh, tra training to some people. But you can also show some good examples, and and just an example when we uh, managed to made or to make open source the code that uh, uh, reads the Italian uh, ID card, which is an NFC card. Oh, and by the way, I'm thanks to an Arduino or Nano, I can open the door of my office in Rome with an Arduino with with my ID card uh, close to the door. Uh, but anyway, when we released that software as open source, it became a much, much more secure within one week because citizens and hackers started to contribute fixes on that code. So we, sh we, we had a chance to, sh to say that uh, many eyes on open source code makes that code more secure. That's great. They took my ID back now that I'm... I'm not not a resident in Italy anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that I I went back to the paper one. Because <laughs> you because you're American now. I'm not American. I'm an Amer uh, an Italian resident in America. So I'm but but right you're a citizen as well. Yes, 
I mean, dual citizen. Dual citizen, yeah. <clears throat> wow, cool. Now it's it's interesting because I remember that uh, we discussed it years ago about the fact that it was the first time that the Italian government accepted a pull request. Now that's, uh, that's yeah, it's it's a big shift. It's something that is so common for communities, developers, Arduino community, but so hard in other contexts. Yeah. Wow. So, well, so you are working on this secret project that you can't tell very much about, uh, but uh, can we say a tiny bit about it? Uh, like, for example, can we say that it works with the Arduino Cloud? Uh, I'm not sure we can say that. I'm not, I'm not sure we can say that it works with the Arduino IoT Cloud. I'm not sure we can also say it has a, a display on in here. And a round display? Yeah, round display. Ooh, no, that is we, we can't say there are so many goodies here. I will I will put it here. And let's see if someone guesses what, what, what we are showing, what it is for. Well, we've been working on this for several months. And we are very close to release this. We are never satisfied, actually. <laughs> because we want this to be to be perfect. But but then there is a voice in our head saying, release it because people will know how to use this, even if it's not perfect as you as you wish. But I think it's very close to perfection now. <laughs> wow. No, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice project. We are just teasing people a little bit because, you know, uh, but uh, it's interesting because it's one of the first projects that Arduino does which you know it's closer to a finished product that you could use really use in your home then mm -hmm. so somebody says lilypad has got nothing to do with the lily <laughs> <laughs> maybe just the roundness but no it, yeah <laughs> uh well people will discover this very soon because it will open up a lot of possibilities. Uh, it will come with a nice case. You, uh, it will come with a nice of uh, projects that people can better create. than what we're used to today. It's funny what? that somebody said. Somebody said, "I'm gonna rewatch it in slow motion and figure it out." <laughs> <laughs> so nice to tease people, but I would like to tell much more. But no, 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 no. Next. <laughs> In a few weeks, we will announce this. And basically, I can say this is going to be like the first step of a sequence of upgrades, expansions. Mm -hmm. No, OK, it's too, too much. Massimo, let's talk about something else. Let's start time out. As a head exactly. of no, no, no. I'm stopping you now. Exactly. And uh, also, we are approaching the end of the show. And so I wanted to, if there are other questions for Alessandro, write them in the comment section and he can answer also after this video is uh, being kind of you know replayed and uh so in, in why don't we bring back uh if nerea is still with us i will bring her back to the stream as well boom so dear guests thank you ah, somebody said the project could be something nasty as in like something that's got to do with the nest. Hmm. Okay. Let's say much more, much more than yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. I like th this teasing the audience with the new product is funny. Yeah. More. <laughs> <It's happened. laughs> Thank you for doing that. And this is not cardboard. No, I'm joking. It's a real product. It's yeah, a super so prototype. <laughs> So, dear guests, thank you for being on the show. It was uh, great, uh, and uh, you know, I thank you for taking the time. So, it's the time now where you can basically say good night. To the, start with Nerea, you can say good night and say hi to anybody you want, and you say you have to say ciao, mama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for the opportunity again, and it has been a pleasure. Thank you for everybody that is following. And uh, well, I will say hello to my mother, which is in Spain. And then <laughs> <laughs> Alessandro, it's your uh, turn. 
Can, can I drink? It's time to drink. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I have, right, okay. So, mm. well, I've been incredible. I have to open it with my, yeah, with some pliers because I missed. I just have the right tool here. So, it was a pleasure to be here, Massimo. Lots of fun. And yeah, I hadn't had the chance to read all the comments, but I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. So, Benny, thank you. I, I do want to say, um, Awesome meeting everybody. And uh, in New York today, it's primaries. So please, <laughs> I feel like I. Oh, yeah. This is my duty to remind yeah. my people to go vote. Vote. And and vote uh, with the conscience. Yes. <laughs> vote. Just mainly the message is vote. Just, just go vote. All right. Well, guys, thank you very, very much. Uh, for being with us. Um, people leave comments uh, with questions. We'll answer them in the next few days. So, good night, and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Now, we're going to end.